you were in like a place that uh, traditionally eats dogs and it was would, offered would, to you, would you? Would, if it was offered, I'd try. Yeah, you'd try I mean, it. dogs already been slaughtered. The dogs yeah. already been. I yeah. say slaughtered not to be like aggressive, but like mm-hmm. it's already been killed, mm-hmm. cooked, and cleaned. Mm-hmm. I'd try it, and I want to know just for the sake of that one line in the Patriot, mm. where they're like, "We'll kill them, take their dogs, have dinner," and oh, someone's yeah. like, "Eat their dogs." It's like, "Dog is good eating." Oh yeah, you know, it's just like. <laughs> Damn, bro! Did we used to eat dogs back in like the you know Revolutionary War? Right. It, and I kind of just want to try to see what it tastes it's like. It's cold enough; you might have to eat your dogs. It's but gotten I'm, cold enough; people have eaten pe- folks. Yeah, folk yeah. eaters. Honestly, though, hmm. I don't know. I probably shouldn't say this because I feel like this would <laughs> might come back. I, I mean, like if I ever in a life or death situation. But there are some people I would a hundred percent eat before I ate any of my dogs. <laughs> I had really good dogs growing up, dude. And I've definitely met people that I would like, if they died, I wouldn't really be that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really be upset if I had to eat them for survival. I don't know how else to really say that. Like, you know, I'm going to say like out of maliciousness, I want to eat them, mm-hmm. but like, it is a no brainer between you or my dog. Mm. Like, I'm going to feed you to my dog. Like, wow. yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me Pat, come on. Like you're telling me there's not people you mm. met that you, well, I guess would, you don't have dogs. I, I've grown up with dogs. Did you, you know, grow up I, with good dogs though? Did you like dogs. grow up with dogs that like were like as a kid, like you felt like you were in a movie because with, of that dog? Them. The, uh, they were good dogs. I was connected to them, but I think I've always had a, like a maybe healthy or unhealthy view of like, what an animal is so like oh sure like this is like whenever like a and it's gotten worse over the years watching people with their dogs just oh, like dude, everybody with their like untrained dog you're watching people with bad dogs i know dude and i'm just like you shouldn't have a dog what is it this dog has no purpose yeah what, where you're giving this dog no purpose and discipline yeah. that's how i feel about a lot of like a lot of people's animals i'm just like that's a bad dog because you're a bad owner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I bought it a sweater. It's like, yeah, but you never told it no. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and this voice, oh, don't do that. Oh, no, no. That's not saying no to an yeah. animal. Oh, Dude, man. Some guy, what was it? Uh, I think it was, okay, this is going to be a weird, this is on the dog story, mm-hmm. right? I was watching the uh, Matt and Shane secret podcast for the two comedians, Matt McCluskey and Shane Gillis. It's a very funny podcast. They just sit in their living room mm. holding mics and just, you know, the the production is not very refined. Mm-hmm. But then they have guests in their living room too. And um, <clears throat> this guy, uh, I don't know what his name is. I forgot. But I think he helped produce uh, Gillian Keeves' um, like skit show that's on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And he's a he's a pretty funny comedian. He he does an insane amount of really good. He does like the best Dave Chappelle mm. impression I've ever seen in my life. It's crazy. <laughs> and uh, he was doing an impression of um, uh, Bill Bill Burn. No 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 no, that's not right. Uh, bald but kind of ginger, loud, um, really aggressive guy. Not Bill Burr. Bill Burr, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna I was thinking of Bill. Uh, Bill Burnham, but that's not it. It's Bill Burnham and Bill Burr. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. (laughs) But he's doing his impression of Bill Burr. Bill Burr was making this joke about how he was in Ireland. Mm -hmm. He's at this dog park in Ireland, and Mm -hmm. everyone's dog is just running around, but like insanely well behaved. Like no barking. There's no barking at all at this whole dog (laughs) park. There's like 50, 60 dogs. None of them are biting. They're all like politely sniffing, and then Mm -hmm. they turn around and run back to the owner. Mm -hmm. And Bill Burr is like, this is crazy. Like he leans over to this Irish man. He's like, this is amazing. Like, mm. how do you guys have such well-behaved dogs? And the Irish man was like, cause when he beat the ever living fuck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what you got to do with your dog. <laughs> and, uh, and like Bill Burr's like, that's right. That's why no one's dog here is well-behaved. And, <laughs> mm. and it's just like, you know, very different culturally. Mm-hmm. What like a dog is there. Mm-hmm. And his dogs are probably happy. Yeah. Not all like anxious. Like they're not like their dogs probably aren't on. Anxious C- and aggressive. Yeah. They're not yeah. on CBD medication. Like, <laughs> their dogs. Dude, you can't say that, bro. I have family members. 
<laughs> dude, I'm telling you, dude. If any, if they hear that, they will flip. They be like, my dog needs that because of its bad hips. I know it says, <laughs> oh my god, but it's like his bad hips and his anxiety. No, she has separation anxiety. Okay, no, you live in a you know third floor apartment. There's nothing wrong with them in a third floor apartment, but like you have a Great Dane in there or whatever, or like or like you have a cow dog. You bought a cow dog and you put them in the up in there, and now they're just like you know shaking all the time, yeah. and you take them to a counselor. You have a herding dog mm-hmm. in an apartment. Yep. And you're telling it, you're like, no, no, we don't, no, we don't, we don't talk like that now. No. Oh yeah. And it's like that dog wants, like, if you open that door, that dog's never coming back. And like yeah, that gonna dog's going to go, go have out. some freedom. Yeah. And it's, you're going to see it on the news hurting like kids. Mm-hmm. I saw three dogs just out. I could tell they were loose. Like as I was, I was driving like fast on there, I could see them kind of far away. And like, it was just these three dogs, one big one, two little ones. And they were having a blast. Oh, yeah. They were just king of the world. Dude. They were just running around, sniffing stuff, and Dude, they were... Dogs remain kiddos until mm-hmm. they die. Like, even well-disciplined trained dogs mm-hmm. are just kiddos on the playground until the day they die. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like I don't think that's, they like, what a lot of people <laughs> get. Puppyish attitudes. I just come think, out. Yeah, I mean, like, I can think of, like, the most... Like, the best dogs I've ever seen in my life were the sheep herding border collies in Norway. Oh, yeah. And they would just go, and this dog would get up immediately out of a dead sleep in the house, Mm -hmm. run out. Like, it was like like watching water flow, Hmm. like the way it moved through a house. Mm -hmm. It would run through and out the front door, and I was watching it, and it would just spring, like, six feet in the air over a fence, land, and just be sprinting, and it would disappear. Just and off then, into the and then it would come back in like forty five minutes with its flock. Yeah, and they 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 knew somehow they knew which sheep's were theirs because mm-hmm. he had three dogs mm-hmm. and he had a really big flock and mm-hmm. those dogs always only went and got their sheep mm-hmm. and they always herded their sheep to a different spot than the other sheep. Yeah, and he I was just like that is insane. Dude. Yes, dude. I don't think there's there's people who can't learn how to do that. Yeah, you yeah, know what I mean. For sure, I agree. <laughs> and as I think uh, working dogs are the coolest. Watching a dog do what it's bred for, watching a working dog is just one of the most rewarding things to watch happen. And the, the like hunting dogs are just awesome. Shepherding dogs are so cool. Uh, watching a Great Pyrenees uh, heard a story. Uh, it was. I was on my, one of my dad's friends, uh, their family had a ranch and, uh, they would, it was a cattle ranch and they would, they had like six great Pyrenees that mm. they would just let loose out into, um, into the ranch and they would be gone for days at a time and they would come, they would just be out there patrolling for coyotes and whatever else was going to hurt the, uh, the cattle and they'd come back all bloody. Really? Yeah. Like their white coats would be all bloody because they would, uh, they'll run up on a coyote, grab it on the back of the neck, flip it over and the rest of them get it. Gorge it. They kill it. Yeah. And then they come back in all wild and bloody and then they, they spray them down, bathe them. They just lie around the house like, like, like normal dogs, like normal lazy dogs yeah. for a day or two. And then they just let them back out. And they're just on the prowl. Dude, the scary thing about like Great Pyrenees to me is mm-hmm. that you look at them and you're like, oh, that's just, that's just, uh, uh, um, what's the term? That's an albino golden retriever. Right. That's like a big albino golden retriever. But like when you look at it like a Great Pyrenees and like a standard golden retriever, mm-hmm. the only difference is like color of coat and size. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that those two look so similar and one is like, a incredibly efficient guard dog oh, or yeah. cattle guard dog, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the other one is just like the most like dopiest, mm-hmm. friendliest. Can learn a lot of tricks. Yeah, but, but they're not, not highly, not not highly a, intelligent. Not like, speci- uh, and it's not breed. aggressive. Uh huh. You know, um, Great Pyrenees are pretty. They're pretty cool. Um, I definitely would want one, but that just like I would never get one. Mm-hmm. And let, if I didn't have a means for it to do its thing, gotta have a little bit of little bit of space. <clears throat> like even if I ne- didn't have coyotes, mm-hmm. you know, I would I would I would get it, but it'd have to have like the ability to run mm-hmm. and like I'd want it to be able to go after stuff like mm-hmm. rabbits or something like, like you that. At least need to have like something th- to three chickens, 
that yeah. it takes care of. Yeah, it's like it's that's like it, gets, its it, needs, it does need to be mama. Mm-hmm. You know, it does, it, like that dog needs to be a guard dog. Yeah, um, and I don't want it really guarding my kids because mm-hmm. that means it might be like mean to people when they show up and try to interact with mm-hmm. my kids. You know what I mean? And that's what that breed specifically is pretty good for that stuff because they are kind of threat aware like they're like you don't train them to attack people but like they they have a pretty good sense of like oh this is this is not a good person like this is that person and they're they're big dogs you got to have them under control um the i had a bernie's Pyrenees mix as a kid and we were on a road trip and we let her out of the car and she was only like eight nine months old and there was a herd of cattle on the other side of this barbed wire fence and she just took off jumped the fence took a, this field was spread out with cattle and she just ran around all of them and herded them into a group and then laid down and watched them hmm. and it was like she's had zero zero training you know she was basically at that point could sit and was like house trained hmm. but but the instinct ability it just she hopped. She just went and did the thing that thousands of years of breeding had trained it to do. And um, yeah, the working dogs are. Uh, I think they. I think it's cool to watch them because you see something that truly is made with a purpose, like fulfilling mm-hmm. its full purpose at that point in time. And uh, just like with uh, police dogs too. Oh yeah. Um, I had a. Oh, criminal justice teacher. He was a. He said that. He n- never saw somebody not surrender when mm-hmm. the dogs came out. It's because it's, it's terrifying, dude. He, you have a whole different level of fear. full SWAT, whatever. You know, the, it ends with a gunfight. One dog goes in there, just they come out. Yeah. And I saw this video the other day of did Did you see the video of the cop pretending to be a dog? I did see that. That was God, pretty funny. It cracked me up so much. It, that wolf was pretty good. It was. It, it was, and it was some uh, younger. They weren't kids, but they were like older teenagers running yeah. running away from the cops and he just he just start they're hiding off in the bushes and he's just you don't want us bring the dogs yeah, out we're, we're letting the dog out and he's <laughs> and he just all and then he's like, we're gonna release them you better come out and just keeps barking a few more times and the guy they just come out with their hands yeah, up like, dude don't do uh, it bro dude yes. I, I wouldn't i would i would surrender to 100 percent. i like to think i'm brave around dogs but i'm not I mean, I think I'm brave around Mm -mm. dogs. I'm not brave around attack dogs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't. Well, like, like I feel very confident that mm -hmm. I could kill just about any dog. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I could lose to an attack dog pretty Mm -hmm. easily. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like I feel pretty confident that I could, I feel like if a great Dane wants to eat me and it's not like a trained, Mm -hmm. you know, attack great Dane. Mm -hmm. I don't even think those are a thing, (laughs) but like, (laughs) you know, but like, uh, I think if a great Dane wants to eat me, I stand a good like seventy five percent chance. Mm-hmm. Like if that dog's really set on taking a bite out of me, I think I have a good seventy five percent chance I will not die. Mm-hmm. Attack dogs, mm-hmm. like we're talking a uh, Malinois. Yeah, uh, I think I will die. Yeah, because that thing is <laughs> that thing is a honed wolf mm-hmm. that's taken all the wild instinct mm-hmm. and trained it and given it a single channel that it can violently let that energy out in oh yeah and that's scary that's if if a wolf to me is like a fire mm-hmm. a malinois is just a a, a gun yeah. like <laughs> it's, it's a, you know it's a, yeah it's been like sharpened to a point yeah have you seen those dogs uh they're from like kazakhstan or something just these giant like dogs that are for like hunting bears yeah the pokemon dogs oh my gosh they're uh yeah. i call them pokemon because they look like pokemon to mm-hmm. me um i'll try to find what they are <laughs> i always forget what they're called but they are they're huge they have like usually like a sunny red and black coat you know what i'm talking about mm-hmm. is that right or is there well, we thinking they, of different dogs? i'm thinking of these ones are white no, oh, they're white white, white with oh. white and brown but they're they're just giant it, they're probably pretty, but they're it's like a a, a kind of a really bad combo of being super huge and also being a really aggressive breed. Yeah. And uh, there's been people trying to like bring them over here, you know, because they're pretty like. Uh, are you talking about wait flashy dog? Are they big and fluffy? or Are they not fluffy? They're they're kind of fluffy. 
Because there's the Anatolian Shepherd Dog, which I don't think the Anatolian Anatolian region. It's mid. Mm-hmm. I guess it's Middle East. It's like Turkey. Mm-hmm. This is the. It's similar to these. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I mean, those are big, scary dogs. Like yeah. that's a dog that like that is that's a dog that I think I'll die. Mm-hmm. Like that's the size of a Great Dane, mm-hmm. and it's violent. You know. Oh yeah. Yep, they are. There's one else called a Central Asian Shepherd Dog, the the Ala, Al, Alibi. It's a wolf hunting and bear hunting dog. That might be it. But they're just. Or is this, this the Carillion? Maybe it's the Carillion. <laughs> it sounds like it's a the Carillion. It sounds like a Star Trek <laughs> alien. <laughs> oh my gosh, not the Carillion. But what is? Who named that breed? That is hilarious. Um. Anyways, I did see a lady walk by with a straight up wolf the other day. Uh, the the one I'm wild. thinking of is the, I think it's the Tibetan Mastiffs. Mm. Oh, yep. Yep. Those are wild looking dogs. Dude, they're, they are bears. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they oh, are freaking goodness. bears, dude. They are. But if you get a dog, big or small, train that thing. Don't let it near a baby. Yeah. And uh, they bring lots of joy. They uh, bring lots of companionship. Where, where do you fall on the discussion of uh, pit bulls and nurture versus nature? Because I feel like I've had, I've known people, mm-hmm. I've known a good amount of people personally, mm-hmm. you know, not just like neighbors, but like mm-hmm. people who had pit bulls. Mm-hmm. And I, I lean towards... Uh, I lean towards in it's in their nature and it is often brought out in their nature that they're a very, that they can be an aggressive dog. Mm-hmm. But like, it's one of those things where like from enough, the people who had them and then got rid of them mm-hmm. because they couldn't like, because they were there and they were always the person who was like, no, she's a great dog. She's a sweet dog. Like mm-hmm. she never bites you or nothing like that. And then it ends up being like, yeah, but like I am going to have a kid and I, I don't want a pit bull around my kid. Yeah. And it's just like, why you've had this dog for six years and it's yeah. like, and it's the nicest, sweetest dog. And it's like, even them, like mm-hmm. I often hear, and I just kind of am at the point where I'll never get one probably, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And yeah. I, and I get why certain communities have outlawed them mm-hmm. because those are communities usually with a lot of children mm-hmm. and also tend to have a rate of, uh, a lot of, um, like, a uh, dog, on dog bedding. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I've, a couple of thoughts on that. One is uh, there are specific lines within Pitbull that are bred for their um, strength and aggression. And then there's other ones that have just been bred for more uh, being a more, a, a little more docile dog. And so you, lots of times you're not going to a breeder to get one of those. You're getting one from like a, you know, rescue type situation or a litter from somewhere. And you don't really know, you don't, you don't know what that, where it's coming from. Where it's coming from. So if you're going to, if you want to get a pit bull, you should, it, it's good to know kind of where it's coming from and its lineage and stuff in there because there are, I've been around uh, a good handful of nice pit bulls that are the sweetest dogs. Um, lots of those have been also like crossbred with a lab, which helps yeah. a lot yeah. when you're not purebred on that. Yeah. And uh, um, so I think that, you got to be, you got to know that that is a big part of it, that there is just cause it's this specific breed. There's within breeds, there's things like there's lots of Labradors that will never be a good duck dog. They can't be a good duck dog. They're yeah. big, dumb yeah. labs and they're not going to be a good duck dog, but there's other ones that are just out of the box, almost boom, trainable, ready for it. That's what they know. That's what they want to do. So in that same sense with pit bulls, you got to be careful. And my other theory or thought, not theory, but thought about pit bulls is if, um, because of their serious jaw strength and the fact that you can't get, you can't unlock a jaw Mm -hmm. on a pit bull if it decides to lock down, to lock down, um, I would, let's take any dog in a lot of ways. If I'm, if I'm going to have a, um, really angry, nasty, mean chihuahua 
come at, that's come not going to kill come my at kid, me, dude. You know, it's not going to eat my baby's feet. I'm going to slap that thing, and you know, like we're going to get, the, you know, that, that thing's getting the slap or the punt, you know. Um, and, but if you get a pretty mild mannered, well behaved pit bull that all of a sudden for one moment decides that it's going to um, bite on a child or even a person. It's going to, the damage from that is so much greater. So it's just like, it's just like, um, I don't know uh, if I'm going to, if you're going to get hit with a, with a slingshot Mm -hmm. or a freaking howitzer, you know, type of, type of thing. Like the, um, even if the chances are low, if it, if it makes its mark, it's a bad, bad day. So yeah, I think, uh, on the pit bull thing, um, I will tell you this, whenever I see one come around a corner, uh, and I have family or kids with me, um, I pay more attention. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah, dude. I've tried to move one before and it didn't move, dude. It was nice one, but it was like, I grabbed it by the collar and like went to, I can move any dog. <laughs> like that's what I thought. Yeah. I went to move this pit bull. Nothing. No, dude. They can ground themselves. Dude, they are so dense. They are truly so dense and muscular. It is insane. Yeah. Um and so yeah, I think you gotta kinda have the you gotta be careful with any of the dogs you're getting, especially if you're gonna be around kids and stuff, but then um yeah, some of those other breeds, you know. Uh even things like German shepherds, uh um in my mind, I have the word dachshund stuck in my head, not the wiener <laughs> dog. Um, the German one, the um, whatever. Uh, Doberman pinchers, and then the Dachshunds? other big, the other big black one. Dachshund? Oh no, no, other big black one. Big black and brown ones. Boxers? No, no, no. Oh my gosh, yeah. It's, it'll come back to me in like 40 minutes. Anyways, the big dog, just big dogs that have been bred for, you know, to be uh, security animals. Mm-hmm. You gotta watch out, you know, and uh, teach your kids not to pull a dog's tail. Yeah. <clears throat> I think though, like, I don't know, like when you know, when you know your dog and you know your dog is like a. I'll say this. When you have a dog that's not a very mm-hmm. aggressive dog breed, mm-hmm. I think there's almost some value in letting a kid piss off a dog. Mm. Like, I remember my uncle let me piss off his mutt, you know, mm-hmm. and it was a big old friendly dog. Mm-hmm. I tried riding it and it, mm-hmm. it, it didn't want me riding it. Yeah. And I was just kind of pulling on its ears and like laughing and giggling and laying on it. And it turned and it just did a quick, like, not a bite, mm-hmm. but like it put my arm in its mouth just enough mm-hmm. that it, and it was quick and it uh-huh. was like, oh, yeah. And it scared me. Yeah. And I remember that. Yeah. And like it stuck with me. And I like, I don't know, like, it, I think as like when you're small, puts a little respect in you. Oh, yeah. And you respect all dogs mm-hmm. after that point. Now, you know, I had other friends who were traumatized because they got bit by a dog and, it, mm. you know, tore off a chunk of them. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's like, that's, that's different. I'm not saying don't allow that. Yeah. But like, you know, if there's kids who are like messing with my dog and I know my dog's not like a pit bull, but it's like a, <laughs> you know, golden retriever or a border collie or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they're like pulling on its hair, hair and stuff. I'm like, no, no. Warn them. Tell them, hey, that dog will bite you. Yeah. <laughs> and if they're like, oh, 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 and they're mm-hmm. not listening, like that dog will bite you. Mm-hmm. And the third time. Dog's gonna probably bite them. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 I'm all right with like letting. It's kind of like you got to let them learn the stove is hot somehow. Yep. <laughs> I'm not saying put their hand on the stove, but I'm saying if they're constantly reaching and you're having to swat their hand away from the stove, then maybe feign ignorance the yeah. next time they go to touch it. <laughs> it just like or it's like you know dip, like get a like a fork in the hot water mm-hmm. and just let them touch the fork or something to and learn like, it. Hot. Well, some people some people learn by the carrot. Some people learn by the stick. I think I only learned from the I'm, stick. I'm a stick learner. <laughs> yeah, I'm dude. a stick. Oh, I'm yeah. not even like a stick learner where I needed like discipline from mm-hmm. like parents or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm like I don't even know. You, stick sounds like discipline. Like give mm-hmm. them the rod. Yeah. I don't think that's necessarily the right now. Just I think it's like some people smoke break. Smoke break. Hey, Ken, it's Mick, and I've got something important to talk about. 
We all hope we never find ourselves in a self-defense situation, but life's unpredictable. Enter the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer, an actual credible law firm you can put on retainer for your self-defense needs. For just $35 a month, you get national coverage in all 50 states for criminal and civil legal representation in self-defense situations, complete with a 24-7, 365 toll-free emergency line. That's real legal support when you need it most. What's in the package? Bail bonds, scene cleanup, firearm replacement, even mental health counseling. Plus, zero fees for a laundry list of defense-related costs like expert witnesses. So support the show and get yourself some peace of mind. Click the link in our show notes or visit our sponsors page to sign up for the National Self-Protection Plan from Attorneys on Retainer. Hey folks, Pat here. If you're like Mick and I, you're a fan of classic tales like Lonesome Dove, Blood Meridian, The Three-Body Problem, and Steinbeck's East of Eden. With Audible, you can dive into these epic stories anytime, anywhere. Sign up for a free month and your first audiobook is on the house. To start your free trial and support our show, click the link in the show notes or swing by the sponsors page on our website. Want an awesome website for your podcast? Check out PodPage. We use it for the Mick and Pat show and it's a game changer. Set it up in minutes, no coding needed. Support the show by using our link to get started. Your podcast deserves a home as great as ours. PodPage, the one-stop solution. Learn from their <laughs> mistakes. Some people learn from others' mistakes. I think like, I got to make the mistake where yeah. it's like, it's the 18th time I have not paid my red light camera ticket on time. Yeah. And you know what happens when you don't pay it on time? It doubles. They find doubles, you know, just why didn't you learn that yet? Yeah. I don't know. I think for me, it's kind of one of those things is where it's like, you know, you have, we're at the, we're at a point now. Here's the mm-hmm. truth. Here's the truth. Right. Mm-hmm. I love this conversation. Mm-hmm. Dogs are great. Um, And I'm kind of, ta- I'm t- taking it in more of like a, different direction i guess now but uh we live in a society where for the first time in the history of humankind the population that has been cold off uh for the majority of our history Mm -hmm. lives comfortably and i am of that population Mm. i have born with bad eyesight Mm -hmm. and uh you know eczema is like a is not a really big disease now. Mm-hmm. Like it's so easily treatable through like lotions or medication, right? Mm-hmm. But like eczema in 1860 <laughs> <laughs> was like you get an infection through like a sore on your skin and you die. Right. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. like the majority of like human history, whether you believe in evolution or not, you our written history, we can see like this is the first time we've reached a point where the people who died off mm-hmm. are alive to complain. And, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, we have to hear their complaints. Oh yeah, dude. I, like, would, I was the same thing. Cause I'll always be like, I would have, I think how many times would have I died off that I've had to be gone to the emergency room and had to have antibiotics. Yeah. Like I would have been done. Yeah. Exactly. Like bad eyesight. Also, all these things are just like, I'd be leaving baskets. Back at the camp, you know? Yeah. I don't even think they let me read passes, dude. I think I just, like, they literally bring me stuff to just smash a rock on. Like, because that's a, like, if we, without glasses, I think I'd be like, I, they'd all, like, if we, if we were in caveman times mm-hmm. and with, and I, you know, didn't have any glasses, they think mm-hmm. I was like mentally handicapped for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is, like, I think, you know, part of that is is because i'm low eyesight and stuff hmm. my my intrigue before glasses as a kid mm-hmm. got me like stumbling and in trouble or something like that like because i just couldn't perceive things well hmm. and part of me thinks like if this was an example of like lesson learned or lesson learned from watching someone else mm-hmm. i had no way of learning a lesson for someone. i kind of, kind of see shit <laughs> and so like and like to me it's like one of those things where like nature's way of telling you not to eat it is the bright colors right they're supposed to alarm you like <laughs> yellow jackets and you know poisonous berries and poison yeah. frogs and bro with my blind ass i would like <laughs> be putting that frog in my mouth you know what i mean <laughs> and so like and you know maybe that's just evolution's way of saying like yeah, we'll have the blind people eat the poison frogs and all the people with good eyesight will see it from like 30 yards away and be mm. like, okay, so don't do that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Petting a grizzly bear. You're like, oh, nice kitty. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yep. Um, <laughs> but anywho, I, uh, 
I just think that stuff's funny to philosophize. Like, it's one of those things that were like, when when did all these people come around that decided to start complaining about X Y Z? And you're like, well, probably when they weren't dying of hunger. Yep. You know what I mean? Probably when they weren't dying because we didn't have a treatment for diabetes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those weird things where like we don't even know how many people died of cancer. It's pretty hard to tell like if someone died mm-hmm. of cancer unless it was like a cancer that spread pretty lethally throughout the skeletal system. Mm-hmm. But like most human remains now, I don't think there's a lot of signs of like just how prolific specific mm-hmm. conditions were if it wasn't recorded. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you you know, it's like, well, maybe they weren't dying of stomach cancer and um, what's the really big one for men? Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer. Because mm-hmm. they weren't eating, you know, like McDonald's. Wonder bread. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Like a wonder like bread maybe, sprinkle sandwich. Maybe no cavemen had prostate disease because they ate delicious, healthy, red raw meat. Mm-hmm. And and the hearts of the other tribe. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> it's like it, you know, pros cons. Mm-hmm. Pros, hey, no. we don't we don't have to eat people mm-hmm. as like a victory dance anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have <laughs> prostate cancer. Yeah, and low T. Like yeah. like dude, yeah. the, my testosterone is nothing compared to like early uh, hum- hominids, dude. If you <laughs> can you imagine that? Oh my god! You can tell because of their brow. Yeah, I guarantee you. I, I've. I think it's a fact of life that of their the, Joe Rogan brow. Yeah, I, it's, I think it's a fact of life that the further your eyebrow comes out from your head, definitely the more testosterone you have, without oh, yeah. a doubt. Yeah, for sure. It's like even those fish I was talking about earlier, where it's like they just get feral and wild, and like mm-hmm. the, their parts start changing. And the um, uh, dude, there is something about like the way that over the last hundred years we manipulated our food so that it would grow abundantly enough to feed everybody that it's been jacking with everybody's hormone levels. Oh, yeah. Undoubtedly. I was looking at, I remember looking at a picture of, I was at a UNC just walking through the, one of their, their sports center there or something, and they had uh, pictures of all their, like, football players and wrestlers from, uh, from the 40s. And just, like, the guys from the 40s um, were... There's, you know, they were 19 to 24 and they looked <clears throat> like just, they looked like so much more like men mm-hmm. than what we have going on right oh, now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So when I saw like the students at uh, Colorado State University from like 1870, oh my like, gosh, like, yeah. like with the universe, like when Lincoln was like, so we're going to do this, we're going to make a university here. Mm-hmm. And these guys are like, these guys <laughs> just got done with the civil war. Mm-hmm. Like, I guess I'll go to college now. Yeah. In the West, there's still mm-hmm. Indians raiding our college campus. Mm-hmm. And when you see them, you're like, holy shit. Like yeah. these guys, how old are they? And it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of like a very good Western name. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's like, Jedediah, Wisconsin, yeah. <laughs> was 17 years old and was the youngest quarterback for CSU history Yeah, uh, until whatever. You know what I mean? It was just like, holy smokes, like this this is insane. You know, it, it, they're shorter too. They're That's shorter. for sure. They're yeah. all stunted. Like they're all way shorter, but mm-hmm. it was crazy to see those pictures. I'm like, those guys look their so, features. so manly. Yeah. Except all their ears stuck out. What was that? What's yeah. with all the old? What was with that generation's ears all sticking Bro, out? It's because they had they needed it. They needed to be more aware of threats. <laughs> to, they were like whistling arrows. Yeah, exactly. Their ears were sticking out so that way they could hear everything in front of them really well. Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. Uh, I do agree. There's a like there's a <laughs> proportion of like like monkey ears sticking out from the side of their head yeah. with like people from like in photos from the 1880s 90s. Mm-hmm. And I wonder, part of me wonder if it had something to do with like a headgear style choice. Mm. Like I think a common example is like, you won't be able to tell in photographs, but our pinkies for, mm-hmm. from holding our phone. Oh yeah. The the pinky crook from supporting your phone. It comes out. Dude, I saw this in an extreme way uh, yesterday at a rest, three days ago at a restaurant uh, of Chipotle. I was at Chipotle standing in line mm-hmm. and there was these high school girls in front of me. And... She was manipulating her phone with one hand and her pointer finger 
was coming around like this. Like I, I can't bend it enough that uh, her pointer finger could turn side to side, turn at a 90 yeah. degree angle. But if you're holding your hand up yeah. for listening, if you're holding your hand up away from you, if you could point your finger at the second knuckle towards your left or right, that's what, that's what mm-hmm. was going on. And, and it just like, and they were, the dexterity was so weird. And I was like, yeah. that hand has been, is like that. Cause it's used a phone its whole life. Yep. What is going on? Mm-hmm. Freaked me out. It. Yeah. Freaked me out. And, that, and like, I just think like, there's a lot of stuff like that, you know, mm-hmm. like we see and we're like, dude, why are all their ears funny? And it's mm-hmm. like, well, cause of this hat. <laughs> right. Like they all, they all wore like that Sunday hat or yeah. whatever to push it. And they yeah. just, they didn't tuck it. They pushed it down. Um, one thing though, like on that note about food and all that, this is one thing I always love to talk about. Cause I used to work for a, uh, um, agricultural company, a big one, mm-hmm. um, is the correlation over time between glyphosate and autism, dude. Hmm. So glyphosate is, uh, used as a weed killer mm. and it's the big one, dude. It's primarily known as roundup. Yeah. And you can, we can see the rates of autism. Um, <clears throat> and the, so number of children with autism, uh, served by IDEA. I don't know what IDEA is. Um, and the year is on, so we got year on X axis. Uh, and then on the Y axis, we have two values. One is glyphosate, the amount of glyphosate applied to corn and soy Mm -hmm. in 1000 tons. So like Mm -hmm. 10 is 10,000 tons of glyphosate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have the number of children with autism identified. Right. And so in 1991, the rate of autism, 1990, 1991, the rate of autism was like, I think this is children born each year. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but it was like under roughly 10, I mean, maybe 10,000, probably mm. closer to like five, 6,000. Mm. And then in 1992, the first, uh, like probably, it was probably the first year we had like 2,000, um, maybe five, excuse me, 5,000 tons of glyphosate used mm-hmm. on corn and soy. 1993, we start seeing our rise in kids with autism and like we have a very, it's pretty much, it's, it's pretty linear. Mm. Well, I guess the relationship's linear. The rise of it is exponential Mm. Um, because like we see like 95 and 95 through 99, we go to about anywhere from 30,000 all the way up to 50,000 tons of glyphosate used. Mm. And that's when we go from like, 30,000 to about uh, 56,000, 57,000. No, probably from like 30 to 60,000 kids with autism each year. Mm. Diagnosed. And then, here, I'll turn around so you can kind of see it here too, but <clears throat> it's yeah. like... It climbs and climbs. And like, that's a chemical that's being applied to everything. So we kill all the pesticides. I mean, all the, all the pests on it. And... Uh, it's going into the food and like we, we can see like the delay of like the more people that eat this the next year, the more kids with autism. Mm. Um, and honestly, it's, it's not good. Like even like <laughs> the agricultural industry, when I was working at, they're like, mm-hmm. yeah, we, we, we definitely know about that trend. Mm-hmm. Like we're not gonna, we're not going to say that it does cause autism, mm-hmm. but I'm certainly aware that it, there it is a correlation for sure Mm -hmm. you know and uh it's pretty it's pretty nasty but there's a lot of other stuff about like um uh using uh specific like soil uh what's it called um fertilizers yeah like specific fertilizers that are artificially fertilized i guess you could say Mm -hmm. like they're rather than like using manure Mm-hmm. to create fertilizer it's you know all chemically created through yeah through mm-hmm. like creating nitrogen 
in a lab and in, infusing it into the dirt and then mm-hmm. selling the nitrogen infused dirt. Mm. Um, a lot of a lot of coincidental correlations between when we started using that and a lot of other disease like mm-hmm. popping up. And you might like a good thing, you know, the most common thing that we always hear is like, well, medical diagnosis and technology has gotten mm-hmm. better. Yeah. Without a doubt, that's true. We mm-hmm. detect cancer far earlier now than we could in 1990. Mm-hmm. That said, it's kind of like it, it, it. That's the you know the devil in the, is in the details, right? Of like, where is this a correlation? Is just is this just because we're moving forward on time and technology is getting better? Mm-hmm. And that's causation. What we see. Yeah, or is, is there a causal relationship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think uh, even if those specific things like if specifically glyphosate or fertilizer um, aren't the causation. It's those it's they're in the family of things that are the causation, just uh, synthetic chemical based stuff that we are mm-hmm. using in everything and putting on in our bodies. Dude, what do, what do you think like is the theory, you know, the people that theorize like you and I, the first generation to grow up with phones in their pockets mm-hmm. are going to have brutal nut cancer. I've thought about that, dude. Like the there's the radio, radio uh, waves just penetrating the old yeah. twig and berries constantly, and then also like with it like in your face a lot too. Like mm-hmm. laying in bed, like the old brain hole, you know. Yeah, it ain't gonna be the zen. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. gonna be the damn cell phone held it up to my face all day. Exactly, and I don't know. I think that. <sighs> It's one of those things where we always we we find out in a very unfortunate way 20, 30 years down the road. <laughs> kind of like, you know, when, oh, everybody's grandma died of lung cancer. From yep. smoking? Because they all were smoking, you know, that sort of thing. It's true. We have had, like, essentially a whole generation that died and, like, the rest of us learned not to smoke habitually. Mm-hmm. Or, like, in hospitals or in airplanes and in restaurants. And next in the car with your kid. <laughs> That's like, what I mean. Habitually, like, 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 they'll be this, like smoking like, like in the doctor's office yeah. as a doctor with all the other patients. Like, like, like lots of those. Lots it of those seems people, you're stressed. You're, yeah. you're diagnosing you with stress and prescription of a pack of Marlboros a day. Yeah. Yeah. Or like while the baby's being delivered. <laughs> yeah. Just like the, like the doctor's gloved up and the nurse puts one in his mouth and lights it for him and lights one for the mom so she can get through it. And they're just, you know, mm-hmm. that's the way it goes. It is crazy that that was like. One, I mean, and you see it so much more proliferately when, like, you watch old movies. Mm-hmm. Like, nowadays, I I feel like there's still, like, movies that will have a emphasis on smoking, especially if they mm-hmm. really take place at a older time. Mm-hmm. But movies nowadays just do not have as much smoking. And it's intent, It's super intentional. I it's, think it is to right, try to keep like it, like, from being well, I mean, popular. I mean, I mean, when they when you do smoke in a movie, oh, it's yeah. like, it's a, it's a very, like intentional prop storytelling mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. and not just a prop to wait around like it's like it's telling you about who this character is and yeah and you're getting into their psychology versus yeah, like I get what you're you know just like the detective smoking his pipe or the, or the guy like just like smoking a cigarette while he's you know in uh, Casablanca just like Bro, here's looking at you kid I watched, it's like I, I watched Chinatown with Jack Nicholson mm-hmm. and it was like when Jack Nicholson was young mm-hmm and holy shit, dude, the amount of smoking in that movie. Yeah. I bet you could count it. And I bet you could count like, I bet the amount of cigarettes that get lit in that movie, you could fill up like three packs and they in probably, a two hour movie. I bet they, I mean? they probably weren't even smoking for the movie. I don't but know. They, I don't think it was. Like, I don't like, think it was for props. Like, like they were just like, like well, they would just like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like fifth take <laughs> yeah. extra over here is just yeah. like lighting up a cigarette, you know, like whatever, yeah. you know. <laughs> hey, how far was that down in that last take? Well, yeah. I might as well light another one. Yep. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so I think that, and it was funny about the smoking thing too, is like any of anybody I know who's quit, um, even for like, after three days and then three weeks notices immediate health benefits. Oh yeah. Dude. They're like, yeah, I don't wake up feeling like crap and like coughing and hacking up. And I'm like, yeah. So like you should stay quit. Right. And it's mm-hmm. like two more weeks later and they're back in the game. Yeah. I definitely noticed when I stopped vaping, like Ooh. when I switched to Zen mm-hmm. full time, I definitely noticed an insane amount of like energy mm-hmm. and less anxiety. Mm-hmm. Dude, cause I mean, vaping, you get so much nicotine mm-hmm. that like you just lose all sense of like nicotine having any effect on you. Yeah. 
And I met, and I think that's the same with smoky cigarettes. Like I don't mm-hmm. think a habitual cigarette smoker feels the. I guess it's they don't, know, dependent, they don't, on, dependent on who you are, but like you feel the lack. You feel the lack. You of feel it. the you lack. Don't, you of don't it, feel you the. Know, like you don't when, feel it come on. When I throw in my, <laughs> when I throw in my three Zim pouches right yeah. before bed. I definitely feel <laughs> sleepy <laughs> and I feel sleepy every night mm-hmm. when I throw those puppies in. The, and uh, I think like, I do remember vaping that I would try to like take a, a, a harsh rip <laughs> off a pod, you know, off of that, like that mango the, jewel, the, all the OGs out there. I didn't like mango because when mango ran out or burnt, it tasted bad. Mm. I was a, I was a cool cucumber guy. Oh, the cool cucumber. Did, and like, I would try to get that so I'd get sleepy before bed and get mm-hmm. that like relax sensation mm-hmm. and I wouldn't be able to get it anymore because mm-hmm. it was so much nicotine being delivered. Mm-hmm. And when I got rid of that, I just felt like so much more sleep, better benefits, you mm-hmm. know, and like way less stress and anxiety about like not getting the, the I don't want to say high because it's not yeah. a high, but not getting like the sensation of like calm that comes over when you, when you, you know, are using a good amount of nicotine. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. And so with the new products people are using or, or just any cell phone next to your balls, I don't know, like, are we just going to, we'll find out, we'll find out someday yeah. Yeah. what the, what the deal is going to be. That's why it's funny to you how so many people do have like a, starting to get like librarian neck. You know, when you look at somebody from the side and they're, they're all, all shoulders are rolled in a little bit and their heads, their heads kind of forward and because they're looking down. down at their Everybody's phone looking down at their phone all day. Yeah. yeah. I believe that. I definitely have noticed, like, I've been, or at least I've noticed I've been making more of an effort on my posture Mm -hmm. to try to have better posture. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I, uh, excuse me, Uh, um, part of me wonders, uh, I guess, what do you you think might be the big one? Like, what Mm -hmm. would you, what would not surprise you? That's not, like, right now Mm -hmm. been identified, but what would not surprise you if, like, it came out and it was like, so here's the truth. Like, this is so bad. Mm. Like, you should not have it. Like, you should not have it habitually in any way, shape, or form. Right. Or even near you. Yeah. I don't know. That's the thing about it. Like, there was a... People used to get... These watches were the dopest watches you could get. Oh, and they were radioactive. Because they glow in the dark, baby. And there was these... uh, There was a town in the Midwest that painted these watches and mm-hmm. it was these ladies who would um take radium paint mm-hmm. and uh they would they would paint the watches and while they were doing it they'd always hold like the paintbrush in their mouth or they'd always like dab it on their tongue like as they're doing it and like this town turned into a ghost town of people because everyone like, died everybody right? just died of horrible like radioactive uh exposure and so they, was, they just that, had no idea. Which that was they, the they same town have. that uh, I think it was the same town. Gosh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna look it up just so mm-hmm. that we're right. But because I, I remember um, we went to a museum, mm-hmm. and they were talking about this town where they painted these plates, and there were two types of plates. They mm-hmm. were like this bright fluorescent orange, mm-hmm. and then a bright fluorescent green. Um, uh, what what is that called? China. Uh, but, um, they ended up being, you know, radioactive and like everyone, everyone who painted these died in, there was a huge recall at the time across the U S of ads of like, do not throw this in the trash, mm-hmm. like call us and we will come pick it up and dispose of it for you. Cause mm-hmm. this is insanely radioactive and I'm going to try to find them up. Cause I think it was by the same, like in the same place where they were just doing all these painting, uh, with this radioactive paint. Yeah, I think that the what the next thing could be, do we even know that it's currently being done to us? You know, like whatever the ingredients is in your freaking uh, liquid death water, Mm -hmm. you know, like that's got on so hard right now. It's like the liquid death water that's like whatever, something in the can or and and the or is it something as big as like, you know. People, the, the first answer lots of people would have for this would be like the COVID vaccine or whatever, like that this, that everybody was forced to, uh, to, to take in the, the way that, you know, what are the effects of it long-term, short-term, um, but people obviously there's been plenty of speculation or evidence around what that, what that could do to you. And so the, 
I think I think the cell phone piece um, will be less destructive physically than actually the like the usage of constant the constant use of that uh, for uh, social media and your psychology and your psyche. So I'm gonna I think that you know people are kind of nervous about it, but I think like the the AI world can potentially while I don't think I don't see a huge physical harm coming from it I think I see I could see like some like the biggest cultural psyche shift we've ever seen with that becoming more and more mainstream more and more used where people could not know what's real anymore and or rely on it too heavily for losing their own creativity and soul and ability to think for themselves or whatever. And so I, mm-hmm. I think I see those things being something that could play a huge role as far as the, the physical chemical stuff and all that, you know, I just have no idea because it feels like we've already found all those things and mm-hmm. like have been rooting them out. But who knows, dude? I mean, it could be like the new thing they've been putting in drywall, you know, just like asbestos was getting you. Now there's another thing. We'll see. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I'll be honest. I think it is going to be, this is the one I'm banking on Mm -hmm. is the like effects of your body's ability to digest, Mm. uh, like energy drinks. Oh, yeah. And I think, like, the, I think it'll be, you know, again, like, same thing with smoking. It's like you can do it once, twice, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can have a couple a week, maybe. Mm hmm. But the habitual day in and day out, two or the three, three, four a day, yeah, okay, yeah, and it's just like for years on end. I think will mm-hmm. alter people's digestive tract and create, you know, uh, cancerous issues in like in the stomach or the intestines or mm-hmm. colon, right? And like I just, <clears throat> I mean, because I know there's like been talks of like research already on like its ability to shut down liver, mm-hmm. and like your your liver's inability to process. 8,000% of your daily dose of vitamin of B. Anything, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, if you're having 8,000% of your daily dose of vitamin B in each can, mm-hmm. and you're having three cans a day, so how many every months, day. How many months worse is, is that in a day? You it's know? insane. You know, and it's, it's like your your liver... Your liver can't handle that. Mm-hmm. Like it's it, it is like <laughs> it's like I think people are like, oh, it's a vitamin. It's like, yeah, you're right. You're not giving your liver, you know, <laughs> Tylenol mm-hmm. to digest, but you're. It's like going to a car and filling up its gas tank to the point where like you've emptied the gas station's reserves. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? Damn, why will my car? Why is my car on fire? And mm-hmm. it's just like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It For is, sure. Uh, is one of those things, but so that, that's one I think. I, I thought you know, since your business, you mm-hmm. know, you do radon. I thought this you'd have heard of this. Two hundred and forty days worth. That's insane. In a day, if you're doing eight thousand percent three times a day, yeah, yeah, that's crazy, dude. Is that right? Yeah, dude. Have yeah. you not yeah, seen? I mean, the- yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like that. That's that's a year's <laughs> worth. On the can. I like think, a year's worth in a day. You I think know? it's Nos that I remember reading. Oh, yeah. it, it was just like. 8,000% or maybe it was 3,000% of your daily dose of vitamin mm-hmm. B. And I was like, good thing I only have these like once a month, maybe, yeah. you know, like when I really need it for a drive or something. Cause mm-hmm. other, like, otherwise I'd just be kind of concerned. Um, anyways, with your job on radon back to this radiated mm-hmm. radioactive stuff. Um, I thought you'd have heard about this, but these were pl- uh, plates and dishes known as fiesta wear. Mm. Wait, how long ago? Uh, came out night so nineteen thirty six and nineteen forty three. Okay. Oh, hold on, I just say okay. Keep going. I got. I guess I want you to tell me what your concerns or what your thoughts are. I want you to educate me after I give you the years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. First running was with natural uranium mm. to create a glaze for Fiesta Red from nineteen thirty six to nineteen forty three. Okay. <laughs> then they used depleted uranium. Ugh. Which is so people know depleted uranium is what we use for like anti-material tank rounds. Mm-hmm. It's still, <laughs> it it stays rate here. I'll tell you this depleted uranium stays radioactive for, uh, uh forever still. And <laughs> it, there, there's, and then it turns into radium mm-hmm. and then it stays, uh, radioactive forever still till it becomes radon. And then, uh, it goes away. 
Then it's but, a gas in your house. Yeah, but the <laughs> lifespan of that is, for all intents and purposes, of being a human who lives 80 mm-hmm. years, it's it's forever. It's, it's the forever solar and ever and ever. Yeah, it's, it, oh my gosh. Uh, that was Fiesta Red Fiesta Wear mm. uh, from 1959 to 1969. And then the last run was 1969 to 1973, mm. where uh, Fiesta Red Fiesta Ironstone was made using uh, depleted uranium. Oh my gosh. Uh, and they came in a bunch of different colors. The most popular ones were like these orange ones. And I'll show you. I mean, it's kind of like weird because I've looked at them like I've eaten off that plate at yeah. a Mexican restaurant. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I have that bowl. Like, but here's <laughs> the deal. Because Fiesta, the reason why I say this is because Fiesta is still a product out there. And like, anyway, that, it's that, not like, radioactive right, anymore. It, that, that's what we got for like our wedding. Like, whatever. Like, that was the gift. Like, I got Fiesta wear out the yin yang, but good thing it's the modern <laughs> stuff, I guess. Who knows what's in who that? Knows, yeah, yeah, who like, knows what's in that? Oh man. You should you should uh, you have the measurement tools, don't just you? Get the little Geiger counter on. You on should. It, you right? should like measure your fiesta <laughs> wear, bro, and come back and report. But dude, this is all right. So this was the exposure to the body from the gamma rays emitted <sighs> by this ceramic glaze. Mm-hmm. If you stood one foot away from it and it was a 10 inch plate, uh, dude, help me understand how to read these. Mm-hmm. 6.5 by 10 to the negative fourth MREMs per hour. I don't deal in, in radioactive things that are that highly radioactive, <laughs> yeah, okay. but that's a lot. Yeah. It's I a mean, lot. It's, if you're one foot away, that's how much you're getting exposed to per hour uh-huh. from a 10 inch plate. Yeah. And everybody's got 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> you stack Next them. to your head where yeah. you're doing the dishes. Eating your food off of it. Ugh. The exposure to the hands from the beta particles was a big one. Mm-hmm. Like upon contact, <laughs> this is crazy. If you're one foot near it, you get 0.84 MRADs per hour. Mm. And if you just touch it, it goes from 0.84 to 24 MRADs oh per hour God. just to touch it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's bonkers. Anyways, there was a big recall I remember hearing like from a science teacher or something about it. Uh, and you know, I think it was before you or I were born when they did the big recall and got it all back. But you know, wouldn't be surprised if that same town was the town that also helped paint Fiesta Ware's uranium glaze. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm converting this over into what I work in mm-hmm. just to see the. And so, how's that company still in business? <laughs> Dude, the same reason that agricultural companies are in business when we have a lot of questionable, you know, mm-hmm. correlation evidence that Roundup causes autism. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Tell us, Pat, what's the math? I'm still, I'm still working on it because I deal, I deal in trillionths Mm -hmm. of a curie which is but every trillion particles for them are like that radiation right and this is this is saying that one mrad is like a a trillion uh a trillion pico curries pico curries so like so the so (laughs) 0.84 mrads per hour is a trillion pico curries it's something it's something like that where it's like it's Bro, and touching it is, is 24 <laughs> trillion? It's something like that, dude. The, the, the math goes off the rails That's fast on insane. the side. We're just like, it is not good for you. Oh, my gosh. He's like, don't touch that. <laughs> no kidding. What's funny is in the picture, it's a dude touching it. Like, mm. hand yeah. on the plate, holding it up to show you that the bottom says Fiesta wear. No oh glove. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The, yeah, that's. Yeah, it, it, that's off the charts. I mean, that, that's melting your hands and stuff, you know. <laughs> like this, you know. In time, in oh, due time. My Bury me with my Fiesta wear so that way I just turn into a sludge. Or, or a superhero. <laughs> or yeah, or I come back as like an undead superhero, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> Not according to the comics I've read. I think you're on the right track. Um. Anywho. Uh... So what are we doing to our bodies? Yeah. What are we Pretty crazy? What's happening? Speaking of jet streams and what they're doing to our bodies, mm. 
Did you uh, follow all the stuff about the F thirty five jet? I I thought a, that was a little awesome. Bit. I, I I followed. I've I've looked a little bit of it, and then I've, I did listen to the nine one one call. That was a great call. Oh my gosh, the the to the nine one one operators credit, like they do have questions they have to ask, and also. It would be so confusing to get that call. Yeah. But she just sounded so incompetent. It's just like, I ejected from an airplane. Please send an ambulance. She's like, are you hurt? I'm like, he's like, I, I've crash landed an airplane. Please send an ambulance. You know, just like. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't crash land. Right. But like, but like to like, you know, to yeah. like iterate, like I. It's surprise ejected him. Yeah. It's just like, please. Uh, so, uh, so I don't know. What, I haven't looked up into it. So, did the, has there been reports of what happened? Was there a failure? What did he have to? Why did he have to eject? Have they found it yet? They're just saying they found the debris in South Carolina, but I just think they're just saying that it's a pretty small state as far as like. A, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm just think they're saying that so that way we don't know that they can't find it. Yeah, no, uh, for real. Because like, to, there's if there's no pictures from bystanders on. On the ground on, on, on the internet from the it. exploded yeah. jet record didn't didn't happen um no so excuse me again sorry um what occurred is that there was like a computer malfunction that thought uh the pilot was in danger and it auto ejected him oh my gosh so it, is that something the that- jets could the jet is still like programmed to fly itself away from population yeah. centers without a pilot so it doesn't mm-hmm. like it, it's supposed to iron man that shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. like go or sorry not iron, iron giant man, iron giant yeah, yeah. Super <laughs> man. No, no 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 what are you doing yeah. <laughs> um, if, if it's that intelligent it should be able to land itself well they technically oh do you know yeah. i mean like we, we have most planes can do that <laughs> like now like oh they can do just about everything other than put the wheels on the ground make it pretty close like you got to be the one to kind of yoke it onto mm-hmm. the ground but otherwise um you know it was pretty crazy uh i remember <laughs> like before i even it was like 15 minutes before i heard it i'm mm-hmm. on a call i work i work for the uh contracting corp like company and i have some people who are in Virginia near DC and I hear through our team's call the sound of jets <laughs> uh, and they're like oh sorry uh, if you heard that I'm near the Air Force Base or Naval Base or whatever I can't remember what they said and mm-hmm. I was like you know we were like no worries whatever and then like two minutes later I hear the sound like j- low loud jets over my apartment huh. and I'm like huh it all was like at the same time we're like Okay, coincidence? Did and you guys then, also like, doing the math real quick? I'm like, no, I knew they didn't fly from Virginia to Colorado, yeah. right? And so I was like, let's uh, like let's just see, you know, what comes out. And then sure enough, like five minutes later is when they announced we can't find this plane. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're just scrambling, like they're yeah. just sending everyone out in search of it. Oh, to go find it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, but it was pretty funny, you know, to like hear that like across the nation kind of simultaneously, like everybody go find that, yeah, and. <laughs> Uh, the I just I don't know I think it's cool but like a lot of people memed it pretty hard and I, I love mm-hmm. the memes that come out of it when mm-hmm. it was like a lot of people quoting Biden saying you know if you want to take on the U.S. government in a revolutionary war you're gonna need F thirty fives and then it's like someone's like looks like we started on that process yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what did you say yeah. <laughs> Oh and I thought goodness. I just thought that was pretty ironic, you know, because it was uh, it was a good uh, touchdown, oh, I guess. But that's a that's a big ass thing to misplace. Yeah, and like the phrasing is mm-hmm. dumb. Yeah, as that was like to say we lost an F thirty five. To say the U S government has lost an F thirty five is not right. ever like what what you know what the public thinks. Oh my god, someone hijacked an F thirty five and is flying around with it. Yeah. Or, or it's like smuggled it's on a, yeah. it off of a boat. Exactly. I thought it was like, you know, they were doing some like, you know, some logistics work. And they're like, where's plane number 301? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we haven't seen it in a few months. We're not sure. You yeah. know, like that sort of thing. Exactly. That's what I thought too. And like the, to hear the real story, I'm like, why did the media even need to know about that? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. was it like a, the 911 operator or something like that? Like, that just doesn't even seem to me like that much of a story. Mm-hmm. It just seems to me like, a, I guess, yes. It would have been way more of a story if it flew into a building. 
mm-hmm. where like it exploded in a population center. Mm-hmm. But I was all, <laughs> I was also like, I don't think the civilian population is educated as much as I am about like our current military industrial complex. Mm-hmm. And I know like what a lot of F-35s can be loaded out with as like a standard munitions load. Right. I'm like, you guys thought 9-11 was bad. Yeah, no kidding. Like one dude, like one competent pilot with an F-35 could level a city. Oh, like yeah. just prioritizing a few missile strikes and then let in that 50 cal, you know, just gun buzz out until it's out of ammunition, take mm-hmm. out infrastructure. Like you're bringing down a city easy. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And one plane. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I'm just kind of like, I was just like, that does, that doesn't seem to be very responsible on the media's part to mm-hmm. phrase it that way. Right. And to, and for like, to make us look nationally just so, or internationally, it's like, just like makes us look so dumb. And, uh, meanwhile, Putin is like looking like he's playing 4D chess. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. With, uh, who was, what was the name of the guy that he killed? The Wagner group leader. Yeah, um, I was Wagner. His, Wagner his, his name's group. like, his name's like. Prushev or something. Prush, Prushevik. Bro, why the fuck was that guy getting out of plane? Like, <laughs> why are you getting on a plane in Russia? Like, think, bro. Yeah. Like, I wonder if Putin really hit him with the, don't worry, comrade. Everything will be forgiven. There's, a, then, <laughs> there's a video of them, like, hugging right before. Like, I've heard, like, he's people just are like, speculating, he's like, like, was it like, that thank was like, you, Putin. I know it was a yeah. misunderstanding. And yeah. <laughs> and Putin gave him the kiss of death. Like, oh, I mean, it's just did he like, really like, like? I mean, like, kiss him on the cheek, and that's kind of the the yeah. the speculation is like you know they were every, you know they just like <laughs> call the, me when you land, comrade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, dang. Um, oh, dude. It, it, Pr- Prigozhin, Prigozhin is his name. I'm sure, that's not how you say it, but yeah, he got taken out. And uh, for this F thirty five fight, I was wondering, do you know? Did it like have a? Why did it think he was in danger? Like they thought, like did it they was, think it was a straight up a glitch? Like, but like it was a malfunction. In did the it think process. that like is is it reading like vitals and it thinks like oh you you're no or I think, is it like a like they think I think that, as best as I can tell it thought like I mean vitals are being read mm-hmm. like back mm-hmm. to command you know because like all that data is recorded mm-hmm. to like analyze like is this pilot healthy enough to fly right now Mm -hmm. or whatever you know right did this pilot have a heart attack while flying the plane Mm -hmm. all i know from like what the like people who you know all i know of like what they can say to the media Mm -hmm. from like these military blogs that would be in the know of it have said like this is like a very foreseeable malfunction it's just that it shouldn't have happened at this stage in the f-35s you know development should right. have happened years ago. Yeah. And so for like this bug to get this far in the process is pretty like unheard of. Hmm. But like the idea of like a bug like this coming, like I apparently like a bugs like this have happened before in like grounded Sims where like they're telling the jet, like, you know, it doesn't have any fuel. Mm-hmm. Right. It is like, it's just like testing the electronics and it's like the jets, like the jet thinks it's flying. Mm-hmm. And the jets like pilot is dead. Eject. And they're like, okay, well that works. Because there is no pilot in the chair mm-hmm. and it thinks like the pilot's dead or something, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like it, it's trying to deal with that. So all I said, I don't know what the specific issue was, mm-hmm. but it apparently just malfunctioned thinking the pilot needed mm-hmm. to get ejected, which is so stealth. So uh, <laughs> like all I thought about when mm-hmm. I heard of that was the Fast and Furious 2 movie, Too mm-hmm. Fast, Too Furious, mm-hmm. where they put the nitrous oxide tanks underneath the passenger seats and they're driving two separate cars. Oh, you don't remember this? I'm trying to remember it right oh now. Oh my gosh. It was so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, they're like, we'll hit the switch and it, the door detaches and then the seat tilts and ejects oh. the passenger out the door, mm-hmm. like out the open door. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what's the main guy's name? Paul Walker's character, mm-hmm. his bugs up or something i can't remember but it was so funny when it happened on screen because it was pretty practical it wasn't mm-hmm. like cgi you know yeah uh and it was it was, it was pretty cool and i was just thinking of that at like the, <laughs> the auto scene. eject yeah i was thinking of that old movie stealth the Dude, uh with the plane that goes rogue the computer i, AI don't, I don't remember plane. that what it was jamie fox and uh Josh Lucas, the Home Depot voice commercial guy now. But anyways, they uh, um, 
Yep. And uh, it's just a movie where basically they they're have this new plane that's flies itself and it goes a little haywire as these things do and they got to go take it out. But God, I just hope they actually freaking found that thing and it's, you know. Bro, it seems to me like stealth is a dog doo doo movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, right. definitely. Definitely was. But it was it was great when I was 12. You gotcha. Know? Um, and the... Just if other countries got their hands on that sort of stuff, it'd be a bummer. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. wait. They might have. We, uh, when uh, we, we left, left all that shit over Afghanistan. there in Afghanistan. Yeah. But anyways. Bro, dude, we sound like such grouchy curmudgeons, <laughs> but like, I swear I will always be grouchy about Afghanistan. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll always be bitter about the yeah. way we pulled out of that. It's that just was, embarrassing. Just embarrassing. So poorly handled. And it just made every everyone who, like, you know, I never served, but I, I'm mm-hmm. friends with a lot of people, work with a lot of people who did. And not one of them has ever told me that they felt like it was worth it. You right. Know, with what they were like in that specific theater. Mm-hmm. I know people who were like, no, I feel like we did what we needed to do when we were going after Saddam. Like mm-hmm. I've met people who were like, I feel like going after Saddam was the right call. Mm-hmm. And I, but like, I don't know anyone who was like, yeah, Afghanistan was a great decision. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and regardless of the, like the long term part, just even that the short term that pull out as far as like, I think you honestly could have picked any five E one eighteen nineteen year old Marines mm-hmm. and uh, had them plan it way oh, way more, more successfully yeah. and way better than it than it went down. Yeah, no shit. You know, like there wasn't a plan. I know, I know. Dude, what was crazy? I like, <laughs> I was like. Oh man, tell me if this isn't the most like curmudgeon thing. Mm-hmm. I was driving up uh, these high schoolers to the high school retreat. Mm-hmm. You know, we had a car pull a bunch of them up to the mountains for it. And one of them asked me about like my opinions. I just was telling, I was asking like what they're, you know, what they're talking about at school and stuff, mm-hmm. what they're learning, what they're liking. And one of them was like, well, what, is, what, what are your opinions about? Like, do you think it was worth us going over to like the Middle East? Mm. And it was weird because, you know, they're at the age where, like, everything's the Middle East. Yeah, and they like, weren't... Like, every conflict is just the Middle East. It's not, like, separate conflicts in their eyes. Yeah. Like, Afghanistan is Iran and Iraq. And, like, these kids were born in 2010. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd say most of them were 2010, 2005 to 2010. Right, like, like yeah, yeah, just way... We'd already, we'd already been... Yeah. There for the big parts of it for five to ten years or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like nine eleven was over, you know. Mm-hmm. So like they don't understand why all of us are pissed. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's one of those things where I just like <laughs> I just went on like such a like just a curmudgeon of like what do you think is gonna happen when you like have a hole in this in the ground, right? Like <laughs> imagine you're on the beach <laughs> and you dig a hole on the beach. What's gonna happen the moment you you step away from it and you stop trying to keep the water out? Water's gonna fill that vacuum up. <laughs> <laughs> like, but they felt they felt really like they asked a lot of good questions and like, mm. you know, they really were like curious about like well, why was it a bad, you know, pull out plan? What was an example of a good one? Mm-hmm. And uh I I educated them also on like the um what was the one in Vietnam that was essentially the same damn thing that happened in Afghanistan. It was like the fall of uh Hanoi. Hanoi, Hanoi, the, Hanoi uh, yeah. Hanoi, yeah, Hanoi. Yeah, when we pulled out of there. Yeah. And it was like almost identical photos. Dude, when you they know what I mean when, I mean you can do that anyway you want to but you this didn't take a lot of like photoshop effort yeah. to I saw it to you where the, they they mirrored them together and blended them and embassy like, pull out embassy pull out yeah like, the same chopper holy shit, it's like dude. good my god yeah that was pretty bonkers um anyways i'm already an old fart dude <laughs> i'm already an old fart about it <sighs> and i you know i don't think i'd be nearly as upset if like i didn't have like friends who were veterans that just like the moment the moment I'm like the moment we're not talking about something and mm-hmm. they can kind of like vent about that mm-hmm. and then they do mm-hmm. and then I hear how frustrated and upset they are and like they go into a long detailed explanation of mm-hmm. all the ins and outs and like the people they're worried about that are still over there that they worked with mm-hmm. and then I'm just like I get it okay 
I'm I just listened to that guy explain that for two hours. And I've mm-hmm. listened to several guys and gals now explain it for their their chunk of time, mm-hmm. and I'm pissed too. Mm-hmm. Like I'm pissed for them, you yeah. know. Um, and it makes me real sad. But anyway, that's a dude. We're covering a lot of topics. I know. <laughs> I feel like that warrants like a whole nother thing because so say, many people don't even know. To roll into a whole nother episode, like, yeah. part two of this thing. Yeah. No, I think maybe like, maybe next episode we do we should actually have like a. Uh, Maybe we just do our research and do like a breakdown mm-hmm. of the fall of Hanoi and the p- execution of the pullout of Afghanistan and mm-hmm. like the parallels and like oh, yeah. why why it was bad and poorly done. Because I mm-hmm. don't I think there's a lot of people who get defensive, mm-hmm. right? Because they're like, I don't know why, you know, whatever reason they want, but like they get defensive because they don't actually understand like how we failed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It hasn't been explained to them mm-hmm. um, and how we should have done it differently. You know, because a lot of people, this is the only time they've seen America leave a conflict. Mm-hmm. And so they're not like, they're like, well, isn't that what we do? Mm-hmm. Isn't that, like, don't we just leave all of our shit there? Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just like, I f- we, honestly, I think some people need it like broken down in a simple way, not aggressively. So that mm-hmm. way they can understand like where we failed. And the, yeah. And, and the really understanding it from the upper leadership standpoint, how that, um, basically how that culminated through you know years and years and years and years of um very similar things that happened in vietnam with the with the upper echelon folks um having to justify their existence through numbers Mm -hmm. um and that same thing happened again so yeah there's lots of things we could dive into there that would actually i think people would be like i didn't know about that kind of like uh the I was thinking, have you, have you been asked about how often you think about Rome? This, yeah, dude, my uh, wife asked me that, uh, Billie Jean asked yeah. me that several weeks ago. Yeah. And I was like, every day. I, yeah, <laughs> I know, dude. And like, I've been, people, some, some guys said I was like full of crap and I'm like, cause I was like, you know, like good, like good three times a week, you know? And they're I, like, I'm probably pushing three times a day at, it, recently. Yeah. You know it, what I mean? Yeah. And, and it just like, it's funny how that's, uh, um, <laughs> I think it really shows where in general men and women's like minds uh, differ on like just how we, how we not only see the world, but how we also um, uh, view, I I think I had to even say it simply, basically like um, how how, relevancy. I'd say say this, like, like at night falling asleep, my wife's like, concerns that are going through her head are like um the boys have a doctor's appointment tomorrow i've got to make sure that i'm ready for you know this other thing that's going on on tuesday and then i'm also have um you know xyz throughout the week that has to get taken care of and i've got to make sure that i get this um errand ran before Mm -hmm. this or i won't have the right stuff to get that done and i'm and that's like causing like a little bit of uh, anxious stress thought process. Right. And I'm laying in bed thinking about how America is mirroring the fall of the Roman empire Mm -hmm. and like stressed out about that. Like, that's like where my, my mind's going to like these, like we're just in different places that that female view is actually going to be probably much more uh, productive (laughs) and vital to the existence and the, and the ongoing, you know, uh, keeping the family and everything moving forward. Whereas, my thing, I'll just think about it forever and not execute any actual change in it. But then also, if you don't have, if you don't have both of those thought processes going, like you got to have those things working in you tandem, you know? And so I think to boil it down pretty generally, that's, that I think that's kind of what's, what's going on for, for lots of, I think there's lots of guys just sitting around who are like stressed out about uh, the, the future. And the, because we're, we're kind of, geared towards this maybe like leadership mindset or like take it to way back in the day like there was way more opportunity to be like the quote unquote king or chief like because there was like 40 of you like you were the head of the tribe or whatever Mm -hmm. and like you could like then strategize and pushing things forward and like how are we gonna you know this land's gonna be you know ours in a few years after we do this maneuver and then Mm -hmm. you know this type of thing and now there's just a lot of guys who 
we don't have the opportunity for that. We don't have, we, we're never going to be in that position, but that sort of like, but if it comes, yeah, yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> Will I be ready? I know. But, yeah, but, <laughs> but just like to, to be like, we don't have the opportunity to step into that role necessarily, but it's still, that's kind of how our minds and brains mm. operate towards. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think that warrants its, its own observation episode. Mm-hmm. I'll say this. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Is that spit? No, it's just, oh, that's okay. just what this like, looks dog. like. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, this is just quaffa nectar. Oh, dude. It does look a little spitty. Um, I'll say that uh, last night, in fact, last night, mm-hmm. as I was in my car about to go up the steps to my house, I was thinking, you know, the elite literally gorged themselves on the highest attainable form of time occupation that they could to the point they were sick and would have like, you know, the Roman uh, hedonism 1% Mm -hmm. were able to nightly go and feast until they threw up in their stomachs and body hurt so much from eating food Mm -hmm. that they had stretchers just next to their chairs for servants to help roll them onto and then lift them up and carry them to bed. Mm-hmm. And that was the highest level. Mm, DoorDash. Of, that was, and I mean, no, we're not even there because <laughs> that's not even, that's not like the highest level of right, right. wealth now. Right, right. I would, that, I would like that's the, baseline. Thing, the thing that I think is like the highest level currently is, you know, of, of like that mimics that kind of hedonism gorging mm. is, and I say this as someone who isn't at the highest level, but in the w- grand scheme of the world, I think it's media consumption. Mm. I think the ability to like, until my eyes are sore mm. and my head hurts and I'm not aware that I'm hungry and thirsty, mm-hmm. I can distract myself with media consumption. Mm. And I think that's like the new form of ultra wealth Mm-hmm. is being able to consume that. Like it used to be food mm-hmm. and as time went on, it, you know, changed into other forms. And I think at this point it's like the gluttony is being able to constantly entertain and dopamine rush your, your mm-hmm. brain from stimulation in front of your eyes. Yeah. You can spend all your time in the Coliseum. Just yeah. put that screen on your face and you're there. Yep. Dude. And that was, we'll talk, we, we should touch on that too, but have the latest meta stuff, we'll talk about that. The latest metaverse some oh. pretty insane developments coming out of the metaverse. And it's just like one of the things I like, I'm like, dang, dude, this is crazy. I used to fantasize about this being reality mm-hmm. one day. And now I want nothing to do with yep. it. Yep. I don't want to spend a single day in the metaverse. Yep. Yep. I wanted the ability to go on, on the Lord of the Rings adventure. Yeah. Like a hundred, like you're just, you're there, you're in it. But the, yeah, as these other things come out, you know, it's like, that was just a fun thought. Now it's just, it's so quickly just divulging they want you into to, just some. They oh. want you to work in, in the metaverse. In the metaverse. Dude. <laughs> they want you to enjoy your house in the metaverse while you live in a pod. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, that, dude, Wally, the Matrix, dude. Wally and That's the Matrix, the freaking dude. Matrix. Oh, yeah. you plug in. You live in a big city. Yeah. In reality, you're just a body in a pod. Yep. Oh man. Anyway, resist the pod. Resist the. <laughs> Take the red pill. <laughs> Take the red pill. <laughs> I think it was the red pill in the Matrix that woke him up. Or was it the blue one? I don't remember. Shit. That's part of the Matrix, dude. We're already in. (laughs) We're already in, dude. Forgotten. Have you seen... Uh, No, we got to edit. We got to edit. We got to edit, dude. We got to edit. I got to go to bed. Hey, uh, all right. Uh, Ken, thanks for freaking joining us. Uh, We got a lot to talk about next time. Uh, We got notes down. Hopefully... It'll be something interesting and of value to you. Appreciate you all coming in and listening to the show. Pat, you got anything you want to sign off with? No, I don't think so. Not today. Dude, I'm, I'm always setting you up. I'm upset for that for that spike. I know. Just go with the good old trusted. <laughs> Till next time, that one. Till next time. <laughs>
If you have qualms or comments, leave us a voicemail on our website. While you're there, check out our latest news, merch, and deals from our sponsors. Till next time, Ken.